Tell me a man who's never had any difficulty in his life. Never, nothing bad's ever happened to or him. Or a woman. Or a woman. And look at them. They're spoiled. They're crying over nothing. They're upset over zero. Nobody likes them. And they can't handle the true trials and tribulations of life. And life is hard and life's going to hurt you. And it's my job to pay attention to everything and go from there. Are there things... Let, let me understand. You never cried? You never cried? I, the last time I cried was when my father died, which I think was 10 years ago almost. A while, a while ago. But difficult things are supposed to happen to me. So I don't have any regrets because difficult things are supposed to happen. Now, there are things I would do differently. There's things I've learned. I'd be stupid if I didn't do that. But to sit and say, oh, I wish this didn't happen and I wish I didn't go to jail. No, I don't operate under that frame. Have you made mistakes? It's not about making mistakes. So sure, there's things I would have done differently. And now that I have a massive platform, I have to be far more careful with what I say and how I talk. I've learned things, and I think the human experience is that we all learn things and we all grow over time. I think if you were to find anybody on the street and say, are you different than you were 10 or 15 years ago, everybody with a brain would say, yeah, I've learned things and life has taught me things and I've changed, absolutely. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have regret about any of these things that have happened to me because I know in my heart what I've done. I know if I'm guilty or innocent. I know I've done nothing wrong. I believe the world now understands I've done nothing wrong. Now we're in a judicial process. We're going to go through the process. I respect Romania. I respect the courts. We're going to go through the process, and I believe the judge is going to conclude that I've done nothing wrong. And it'll just be another chapter in the long book of Andrew Tate. How many cars do you have? Well, Decot have 15. They have 15. How many do I have? 15, of course. On your name? <laughs> Those that are on Let me see if you have a decot sparking. Let me see if you have a decot badge. Um, yeah, decot have taken some of my cars. That are under your name? That's the question, actually. No, that's the thing. So a lot, not all of them are under my name. This is another thing that's been interesting for me because this is my first experience with the Romanian judicial system. A lot of the cars were under company names. Um, Some of those companies I don't own. Some of those cars I was borrowing or they were lent to me. I have a lot of friends with very rich cars and very nice cars. So there are people in England who borrowed me a car and now Decaw have it. And they say, well, that's not even your car. How do I get it back? And I'm like, I, ask a judge. I, I don't understand any of this. I don't know how, in my understanding of the legal system, please understand I'm from a different world. I'm from America or England where you're judged in absolute freedom. You have no restrictions. You're never preventatively arrested. They can't take all of your things without a guilty plea. If they take something off you which is not yours, they have to give it back to the person who owns it. Like, it's different. In Romania, things are very confusing for me. I don't know how decar are holding cars that aren't even mine. But they ran in here with guns and just took everything they could get their hands on. And I do believe in the end it will be worked out, and I believe in the end we'd get things back. But I also want to make a very important point here. I think that the, the reputation of Romania has been severely tarnished by all of this. And that's sad. By your case? By my case. Why? That saddens me because I actually love Romania and I don't want to leave and I'm going to stay here even when Forever. this is over. Yeah, I love Romania. I've been here seven years. I've made a home here. Uh, my brother has children who are Romanian. I have a child who's Romanian. I'm not leaving here. And it's a shame that the international reputation of Romania, which my brother and I have done so much good for, because it didn't have the most fantastic reputation before us. And we came here and everyone asked us so many questions about Romania. What's it like? Is it dangerous? Do, But do you've we... said it's, it's a corrupted country. You've I, said that I've you said America's could, corrupt. could have done anything during pandemic, for example, if you are a rich, a rich person or a, an important person or have a, a certain influence, you can do anything in Romania. Yeah, and I've said America's corrupt also. I've said a lot of countries are corrupt. And you're right, I did say during the imaginary pandemic here, they were not as stringent as they were in some other places. That's a good thing because they shouldn't be taking anybody's rights away for no reason anyway. So I said that in a very complimentary way. And I do think that Romania as a whole had an image problem and my brother and I have been fantastic for the image of Romania. That I can name 200 people who visited this country purely because my brother and I said it's safe, it's beautiful, the mm -hmm. nature's beautiful, they have history, it's such a great place. We've been the number one beacons. The Romanian tourism board should have hired us. All we've done is say good things about Romania for such a long time and now they've done this And I'm getting so many messages from people who are saying bad things about Romania. And that sad, saddens me because I don't want people to think bad about this country. And the international reputation of Romania has been damaged for things like the cars. They came in, they took everything. Half the stuff ain't even mine. It's all been taken. It's been gone for months. We can't get it back. There's other people around the world who own these things who are saying, why can't we have our things back? We were locked up in jail without charge, thrown in jail. There's no evidence. There's no victims. There's no videos. There's no medical records. There's no pictures, nothing. And they're trying to destroy us. And the whole world's saying... I mean, let me ask you a question. If you're a German businessman with a lot of money, 
and you're watching and keeping your eye on our case, would you move to Romania? Would you feel safe to move here and bring all your wealth here and your cars and your money and your watches? And then Romanians want to sit and talk about how we need more money for schools, need more money for the roads, how we struggle with the pension, how the old people are getting hurt in nursing homes. And I sit and say, yeah, well, then you need rich, influential people to come here and obey the law and pay taxes like my brother and I have done. But because there's a few very overambitious decop prosecutors, you've now d destroyed Romania's image to the point where for the next 10 years, nobody with money wants to move here. So what have we achieved? What has Romania achieved? We've achieved nothing. We've saved nobody. There's no victims. You've hurt, put two innocent brothers in jail. You've damaged your international reputation. You've prevented people wanting to invest in the country. What's been the end goal of all of this? It's, it's, it's pretty sad, really, for Romania and for us. And my brother and I love this country. You are talking now a little bit like a politician. But, but are, are you going in, into uh, <laughs> Romania and Romania's politics? Are yeah, you going that's into good, politics? I, I think, I, I mean, I, I'm not too versed on Romanian politics, but I will say that any politician or any of the political parties which stick with conservatism and faith and God and protecting the youth from these new dangerous ideologies is a politician that I will get behind and support. I like the idea of, I guess, traditionally right-wing conservative politics, but really... But you won't get into politics. I won't get into politics. My goal is now to beat this, to restore my reputation, and to restore the reputation of this country. The general public is saying, and you know this, that it cannot be smoke without a fire. What is actually over there that's, that we have all this smoke? Well, that's the thing that's interesting. I don't think the general public understand three things. The first thing they don't understand is that when you're influential enough in any country in the world, you're going to be heavily scrutinized and looked at by, like I said, criminals and the law. Have you had any sign of this prior to uh, the moment uh, they come to arrest you? Well, yeah, in April, when it all began, they, they first came in the house and they released us in two hours because they knew we hadn't mm -hmm. done anything wrong. And then I understood they were watching me from that point. But I had nothing to hide, so I didn't run away. I had nothing to hide. I knew that they were going to be keeping a close eye on me. I'm too big to not be watched heavily by... It doesn't matter if I move to Switzerland. I will be watched. So I live my life with that in mind. I'm watched everywhere I go, and that's why it's a good thing I'm not a criminal. But I don't think people at home understand, for the general public who say there can't be smoke without fire, mm -hmm. how subjective the law is. The law is a very subjective thing. In Romania thing. or in general? In, the, in general, in the world. And the law can be weaponized with a subjective worldview to attack anybody they want. So I can give you a very simple example, right? I can look at you and sit and say, I believe you're an alien. And my proof for that is I've seen her walking the streets at night and she looks at the moon. So she likes to look at the moon. And I heard her listening to love songs, talking about going to space with her lover and how she likes to look at the moon. And we have no medical records. She hasn't been to the doctor in three years. People usually get sick. She hasn't been to the doctors. And I can put together all these little pieces of paper that you're an alien. And of course you're not an alien. But over time, we build up this file, right, about how you look at the moon, and you haven't been to the doctors as often as most people, and you listen to love songs about space, and then, and then I can put it in front of a judge and say, I think she's an alien, we need preventative detention. And then it's up to a judge who goes, hmm, maybe. And, and this is how it works. I can do the same thing with anything. Did anyone try to, to buy your business before um, that moment? It's a very good question. And uh, I, I think that... There's a lot going on that even I don't truly 100% understand yet. But I have put my faith in the Romanian judicial system, and I do think we'll be found innocent. But perhaps there were some other influences. I also want to make it clear that I believe my host nations, my home nations, America and England, have abandoned me. I believe that because of my political views and because I am anti LGBT, anti Ukraine war, anti COVID vaccine, anti many things, and I've been very vocal about it, I think that they were very happy for me to suffer this consequence and didn't decide to do something about it like they could have. So there's a lot going on. Um, but all I can do as a man is stay true to myself and stay true to God and do the right thing. You didn't answer my question. No, I didn't. Because it's on television. But uh, perhaps there were some people interested in my interested in some of my assets before all of this kicked off. Perhaps that is perhaps that had some influence on the case. I'm not sure. Did you order pizza? <laughs> After that moment when they found you, they, yeah. they told everybody they found you. From the pizza box, From huh? the pizza box, yeah. No, I think uh, I was in Dubai for three months. I have very good friends over there. I was there for a long time, and then I flew to Prague, I believe, for Christmas. And then I was going to go back to Dubai, and I stopped in Romania for one day. 
to repack Just my... Just for a pizza. To repack... Well, a pizza. To repack my bag and get a pizza. Mm -hmm. Repack my bag, I ordered pizza. And then uh, my friends from Decault came and took me to the Decault Hilton. And then I've been here ever since. So uh, it seems the Romanians were waiting for me. And, you know, perhaps, I guess, if you were to ask me as a professional what I believed they were hoping to do, they thought that they could throw me in jail with this very weak file with, of nothing, of TikTok, which is garbage, put me all over the news, set up hotlines and billboards, and, and not just in the news in Romania, internationally. If Andrew's a bad person, if he's ever hurt you, call this number. And they thought they'd get a real case. They said, let's just leave him in jail until the real case appears. It didn't appear, because it doesn't exist. And I think that's what the plan was, and their plan failed. So I think that's why all of it happened at all, to be Do honest you think with you. women are scared by you? I know they're not scared of me, because the only problem I have with women is trying to ask them to leave, not to kidnap them. In fact, I would say I got maybe a thousand letters a week in jail, and 500 of them, at least 50%, maybe even more, were from women. The number of women who send me messages of support, who say that you're a traditionally masculine man, I like a man who provides for me, who protects me, my boyfriend's a better boyfriend since he met you, or he started listening to you, my son is going to the gym because of you, mothers write to me. I get hundreds of letters from women. I get love letters with perfume. Are you in love? Am I in love? Yeah, I'm a, I have a, a happy personal life. But um, if I was a vagabond, if I was that kind of person, I get endless love letters from women who I could pursue, but I don't. I, I, I appreciate the support and I appreciate the flattery, but we leave it there. But women are certainly not scared of me and I've never met a woman on the you street. You didn't answer. Am, are you in love? Am I in love? Yeah, sure. I'm in love. Yeah. And I have beautiful children. And... I want to make it clear, this is the thing that's interesting. The internet sensationalizes and people pretend I'm this big evil misogynist. I've never met a single person on the street who dislikes me, male or female. The number of women, every single woman I see on the street loves me. Oh, you're so funny. Oh, you tell the truth. Oh, it's great. Nobody, I've never had a personal problem with anybody, but male you, or female, you, ever. You've said about you that you are a misogynist. No, I said, well, that's, I know what you're trying to say. You're saying I said I'm a misogynist. I, I said, I, I'm not trying to say yeah, anything. Sure. I, I was just I'm a, I said I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. And if being a realist makes me a misogynist, then so be it. I am a realist, and I refuse to sell my sanity and sell my soul to the false god of equality. Men are physically stronger than women. Women have an emotional intelligence and intellect that men don't have. Women are better with children, especially small children, than men do. We don't have the patience for it. Men are the ones who should financially provide. I believe in everything that the world believed in 10 years ago until we all went insane. I'm a realist. And by extension, they call me a misogynist because I say a man should protect a woman. In America, and I don't think Romanians understand this, in America, if you say, I as a man am responsible for the physical safety of my girlfriend, you are a misogynist because I'm supposed to believe that she is empowered enough to protect herself and she doesn't need a man to protect her, but she does. And anyone with a brain out there understands the true difference between men and women physically and she does need a man to protect her. And if she calls the police, men are going to come protect her. So the whole thing is stupid. And but is there that makes me misogynistic in the eyes of the crazy West. But is also the woman's protection for a man. Women protect a man's spirit. Yeah. They protect a man's soul. Exactly. And when you're sick, you need a woman. You don't need your boys. You need a woman. So women have a very important role to play. And I think that the unison between men and women is beautiful. It's been designed by God. We have different roles to play, which is why we're so important as a team. If we're the same, we don't need each other, which is the most destructive thing about all of this. In the Western world, the reason marriage rates and birth rates are falling so heavily is because men act like women and women act like men. So we don't need each other anymore. And there's no unison. There's no point. But a truly masculine man needs a truly feminine woman. That's the beautiful thing about all of it. So yeah, I'm labeled misogynistic for being a realist. And I would rather take that label than sell my sanity and start saying things that aren't true and believing in the garbage, the slave mind programming they want me to believe in. Absolutely not, really not. Yeah. So if that makes me a misogynist, so be it. How do you earn your money? It's a good question. I sell meech. <laughs> you like meech? <laughs> With mustard. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Sarmale. I have um, various companies. One of them is an online educational platform. Mm -hmm. I have a platform online that teaches people how to make money and teaches fitness and a bunch of other things. They're called The Real World. I have a private network, which I also run and operate. I have v various financial uh, instruments which operate and make me money. I have land, I have property, I have 
businesses in other countries, physical video businesses. Video chat also? No. I, I used to have a video chat studio, and I've been very open and honest about this. Mm -hmm. I think it ceased working seven years ago, six, seven years ago. We've had nothing to do with the video chat industry for six to seven years. And Romania is full of video chat studios. I mean, they're still operating right now. We can drive down through Bucharest and pass a hundred of them. So it's not a crime. It's a perfectly legal enterprise. But we don't have any video chat companies or anything to do with that. Crypto exchange is another source of money? We have a few things going on. And I have uh, interest in many different projects around the world. And we do okay. I, look, I have enough money to take care of my family and make sure my mother is living well and my children live well. And my brother and I, we do okay. We have food most days of the week. Sometimes we have to skip a day, but we're okay. <laughs> About food, what do you like most? That's a good question. I, I'm a meat eater, I love meat. And uh, I eat as much of it as possible. I was, it was Ramadan while I was in jail. So as a Muslim, I'm practicing, so I only ate once a day. I could eat as much as I wanted when the sun wasn't shining, but I chose to eat once a day because I tried to be strict with myself. And that means of the three meals I got per day, I got to choose one of them or maybe mix them all together. But um, yeah, I'm a big meat eater. I love meat. And uh, I think that uh, it's interesting because even, even eating meat is being attacked in the West. It's interesting how I can name anything that is under attack in the West where they're trying to turn us all into vegans and trying to make us eat bugs. It's crazy. Is that happening here in Romania yet? I don't think so. I don't know. But in America and England, they have this massive push about how meat is bad for the world and you shouldn't eat meat and you should eat the bugs and eat the vegetables and take the vaccine and sit at home and your wife's in charge. And it's a genuine attack on masculinity and it's crazy how we can have a conversation about anything and it ties back to that. Andrew, who's Matrix? Who's the Matrix? The Matrix are, I don't want to die and I'd never kill myself, but I think people at home need to understand that there are large institutions in the world with massive financial resource and capability which influence the shaping of things. And they influence the shaping of things with a specific goal of gaining more and more control over the populace. And we talk about governments, but very often a lot of the decisions that are made which reflect your life have nothing to do with the government. A law must be passed by a government. A regulation, which is the same as a law, can be passed by a financial institution, for example. And we're living under the foot of these institutions which can affect our everyday life. And they don't want people to become upset to the point where we rebel against them. So they're specifically attempting to destroy masculinity in real time because it is men which lead rebellions and it's always going to be men who lead rebellions. So they want all of us neutered and eunuched and semi-depressed on antidepressants at home as opposed to standing up and realizing that we're being destroyed and all of our wealth is being extracted from us in real time. So the Matrix is a group of people that nobody knows who they are, who are genuinely in control of the world, and they're in charge of all the important things, and they're primary. But they exist. But they exist. In your opinion. Well, it's, it's, if you're a powerful person, you want to retain your power, that's normal, and the number one way to ensure you retain your power is to grow your power. Why and are you saying ex ex escape the matrix? Because the, the idea of the matrix is that you work in, and you consume and you die. The idea of the matrix is that you go to school and you listen to what they tell you and then you get a job and then you work and then you spend your money on things you don't really need and you consume S things and then you die. But you don't ever get any genuine freedom of mind or body. So if I put it in a very simple word, yeah. it's just being different, try to be different, try to be yourself, try to... It's having the financial stability to one, be free, which is the beginning, but also having a free mind. And to have a free mind, you need to be able to think outside of the box and ignore the things you're told. And I think as a man, to have a free mind, you also need to have a strong body because you have to have the capability of protecting your ideas. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to sit and argue with people who can destroy you. So to truly escape the matrix, you have to be a strong individual of, of financial means, which has a mind which is capable of understanding the truth of the world because they are giving us all a false version of reality to try and keep us subdued because if most people at home understood the truth about what's really happening, there would be riots tomorrow. And I also think that's one of the reasons why when I say my whole case is a litmus test, people whose minds have already been freed, who have already escaped the matrix, understand completely that I'm innocent. And the people who watch the TV and they can't think for themselves, well, they can believe whatever they want. They're going to stay inside the matrix forever and they're going to suffer the consequences of that. There are lots of poor people in the world in general. Is it their fault? Absolutely, it's not their fault. In fact, that's what's so interesting when you understand the financial markets and you understand the matrix and how it operates. It's designed to keep a huge percentage of the world poor. The wealth 
that exists in many of the world today, especially at the upper echelons, is extracted. Very rich people are not working. They are moving numbers on a screen or moving pieces of paper and they're becoming extremely rich. Well, how does that happen? That happens because other people is are working. Is this your case? No, it's not my case because I'm teaching this. But this happens especially in the third world, the most. You look at Nigeria and Africa and these countries, that's, that's what's been happening for the longest time. So it's absolutely not only not the poor person's fault, but to escape the matrix, the poor person needs to understand why they're poor. Why is my country so destitute? Why is it so difficult to make money? Why has this happened? When you start to learn and understand all these things, you can begin to escape the matrix. And the world is set up in a way where wealth is being funneled into the Western hemisphere, which is why we're so prosperous compared to the rest of the world. That's now changing in real time. And I don't think many people home also understand that the people who are in charge of the global financial markets have accepted that that's going to change and they're also going to change team. And I think that very difficult times are coming for Europe and America. I think that the world is cyclical, empires fall, and you used to live in Rome and you'd be walking through Roman streets and you think Rome will never fall. This is Rome. It's the height of civilization. And one day it crumbles and then a new empire appears. And I think we're almost in a transitionary period where a new empire is going to appear and take over because the Western hegemony is failing in real time. And it's failing because they've gone too far with their dictatorship and too far with trying to control people's minds and too far with these insane ideas. And unfortunately, it's like being a sick person. When you're sick and you start taking a medicine, even if the medicine makes you sick, you need more of it. Because now in the Western world, the only way they can keep the population subdued is to make sure that we believe in a bunch of garbage. And they're trying very hard to keep forcing it down our necks. Who do you respect most? I have a lot of respect for a lot of people. And I respect any person who gets up, works hard, does their job, thinks for themselves, protects their family, provides for their family. I respect the normal man, the hardworking normal man. I think it's one of the hardest existences on the planet because it's one of the least appreciated. Women are appreciated and respected just for being more often than men are because you're beautiful and you can give life and men want women. And most men go through their lives, don't even get a compliment. I don't think most people realize that a lot of men go through life and nobody even compliments them ever. Whereas a woman gets complimented 10 times a day, she doesn't even want them. She's like, go away, weirdo. So I think the normal working man has one of the hardest existences on the planet. If you're a normal guy getting up, working hard, and you're doing that to protect and provide for your family, that's a very difficult life to live. And I have absolute respect for these people. And I also respect, of course, there's some extremely famous, influential people like Elon Musk, who I have huge respect for, for opening up Twitter for free speech. Absolute respect to him because he's fighting against the tyranny which existed before when you couldn't tell the truth about anything. Just, I will stop you here just for a second. So you are in the Musk team in the, the game Musk yeah. Zuckerberg. A hundred percent because Musk Musk has opened up Twitter for free speech, whereas Meta, which have me banned, they don't allow you to say certain things. And I don't think people understand when we talk about free speech. They think it's just about having an opinion, but it's not that simple. Free speech is the basic underpinning of any democracy because if you can't tell the truth about anything, then you're living in an absolute lie. We talk about the matrix. The fact that nobody online could tell the truth about COVID for three years is why it took three years. If there was free speech, it would have taken three months because nobody was allowed to say, wait, this is stupid. Why, why are we stuck in our houses? So free, spe the free speech is extremely important for the freedom of humanity as a whole. So General. Musk is saving the world. Musk is saving the world. Are you going to train him? I would love to. Uh, I think if he's serious about fighting, then perhaps we will. I know him and I, are, we interact on Twitter sometimes. And uh, he is very interested in this case. This is once again goes but back to... But he has to come to, to Romania well, for Well, this training. is the thing. He's very interested in this case. He's retweeted many videos mm -hmm. where we've explained the truth of what's happened to us. And this goes, ties back into the reputation of Romania. A country I love, a country I respect, a country I'm invested in, a country I want to live in, a country I'm never going to run away from. Now we have Elon Musk talking about how Romania has treated me unfairly. It, I feel sad about that, that Romania suffered that way because they didn't need to, because none of this should have happened because there's no victims of anything. So my primary goal also of protecting my name is actually genuinely to repair the reputation of Romania. And I want everyone at home to understand I don't blame Romania for this. I don't think this is Romania's fault. I think there's some other things that happened. I think this would have happened to me in most countries. And I trust the Romanian judicial system, and I believe that when Romania finds me innocent, it's going to be fantastic retribution for not only me, but the, the state of Romania and the country of Romania to show that it's a proud nation that respects the rule of law. Are you still dreaming about changing the world? I think I've already changed the world. And I think if you change one person's life, you can change the world. It's a butterfly effect. 
You can change one person's life and that one person can grow and do something fantastic. I know you don't like my politician answers, but I, I, I'm changing the world by inspiring the youth of today to be as hardworking as possible. I think that my platform for the generation of young men, I think that if any parent is concerned, they should watch the videos that their young boys are watching that I have made, and they will be pretty happy with what they see. And I think that if we inspire the young men of the world today, we can build a better future. I think that young, disciplined, energetic, hardworking men are always going to build the best society. Andrew? Yes. Have you lied in any moment in, during this interview? Yes. When? When you asked me how many, how many cars I had. Mm -hmm. That was a lie. Okay. The rest of it was true. Sure. Positive. Have you ever lied about this case? I have, no need, I have no need to lie. I really have nothing to lie about. Lie about what? The two victims who say they're not victims, who say this is stupid, let us go. Like, what what if am I? some others will appear? It's been a long time they've been trying to make others appear. That's what they've been trying to do with the media, trying to find them. I've been investigated by DCOT, which is a very competent federal agency, and they've been working in contingent with other federal agencies from other countries. I also want to make this clear to the population at home, anyone who thinks I'm a bad person because of things you've seen on the news. You take any average man off the street, take an average man off the street, and put him under 16 months of investigation from three different federal agencies, trying to find every single conversation he's ever had, every person he's ever spoken to, every picture he's ever taken, every WhatsApp message he's ever sent, every email, everything, every bank transfer, all of it, and see what you find on that guy. What have they found on me? Nothing. If you put anybody under that level of scrutiny, you're going to find something. And with me, they found basically nothing. I'm one of the cleanest people you can possibly walk past on the street. And for all this time, they've been trying to find more victims because they know they don't have a case. And they've been trying to just talk and talk. Andrew's bad, Andrew's bad. Does anyone, anyone think Andrew's bad? Call this number. And nobody calls it. Every person they spoke to, 2,000 people DCOT called, every single one of them defended me. All. So there are no victims and there is no case. And there's nothing to find and nobody knew it was going to appear and none of it's real. So I don't have to lie. What do I have to lie about? Lies, yeah. get, lies, get, lies are very exhausting. One of the things people don't understand about lies is that it breaks the laws of physics. It takes a lot of energy to perpetuate a lie. If I put a lie out in there in the universe, you have to put a lot of energy into that lie to keep the lie alive. Look at COVID, how hard they had to lie all the time to keep the lie alive. I don't have the energy to do that. And the lie is that I'm a bad person. They've told the world that. They now have to find a way to continually try to pump energy into that lie. And that's why nobody believes it anymore. It's failing. Lies get exhausted. And as time goes on, the truth is revealed because the moral arc of the universe bends towards truth. The longer something goes on, the more likely you are to find the truth. And here we are after 16 months of investigation, at the end of my house arrest, after nine months of incarceration, we're here with no victims. And the truth is coming clear to everybody at home. I've done nothing wrong. And then you have to ask yourself, if you want to ask interesting questions, is why did the Romanian state punish me so severely? Why? I don't know. Why did they put us in jail for so long? Why were we under house arrest for so long? I don't know. I can't answer that question. But I'm not going to be bitter about it. I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm going to understand that that was the decision Romania made. And if I respect the safety of this nation, which I do, I have to respect how the courts decide to keep the place safe. But the truth will be revealed in time. Did you ever broke the law in Romania? Well, if I broke the law, I'm sure it would be in the case file. They were following me for a very long time. I think I may have sped once. Take me to jail. Oops. I think I did five kilometers over the limit. But uh, besides that, no, I have no reason to break the law. That's another thing that's interesting to me is that in the West, and I only understand the Western legal systems, we talk about motive. When there's a crime, there's a motive for the crime. Why did they commit the crime? Well, why did I commit this crime? I'm asking for the motive, anybody at home with a logical brain to present to me the motive. I'm already very financially successful. I'm worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I have no need for money. I am very successful romantically. I have no need to rape anybody. So DCOT want you to believe that at the age of 35, as a very famous, well-known, world-traveled person with hundreds of millions of dollars, I decided to create a gang to then force women to do TikTok for money, which made no money. And I was going to force and hurt these women who say that I just told them how to post on TikTok and I've never hurt them. And I've done all of this for, for what? Why? I don't need money. I, I don't need to force women to do anything. It doesn't even make sense. On a, you don't even have to be a legal professional. You can just be a logical thinking person and look at this guy and look at my case and go, well, he has no need to rape anybody. He doesn't need money. 
why, why would he start doing this at 35? He was already successful. If I'm it doesn't make any sense. If I'm going on your logic, someone has to be the beneficiary of this case. Completely. Who is? Well, nobody. That's the thing. I didn't make a penny. According to Decault themselves, I did not make one lay. Nobody made any money. I did, I did this whole big crime for no money. Nobody made any money. I did all this crime when I was already rich with my friends who were saying that I never hurt them. Like, the whole thing is a logical fail. It's a logic fail. When you commit a crime, there's a goal, there's a purpose. What was the goal and purpose of my crime? Did I want to go to jail? <laughs> Did I want three months in the Decot Hilton? There are two variants uh, in your case. Guilty or not guilty? Correct. If you are not guilty, you've explained uh, everything. If they will find you guilty, what will you do? If they will find me guilty, then it's going to be very interesting for the world because they're going to have to justify that, mm -hmm. I hope, to a superior court. And they're going to have to justify that to the European Court of Human Rights. And we're going to see how deep the matrix runs. And as things come out and are exposed about my case and the insanity of it, we're going to have to find out how they can justify putting two brothers in jail with no witnesses on the stand. Please understand this. There's not a single girl who will take the stand against us. It's my brother and I. All of the victims on our side saying, hello, we're not victims. An empty stand for the state prosecution with nobody on their team, nobody, saying you're, you're, you're a victim, you're in a guilty, you're thing. And it's crazy. Consent, they've thrown the idea of consent out the window, which just doesn't even make sense. The difference between rape and sex with a partner is consent. If, if girls ask me to help them on TikTok and I help them on TikTok and they say, thank you for helping me on TikTok, and I say, no problem, I'll help you anytime you want, you can't then come along and say, ah, she's a victim, he's guilty, and because he was so nice to her, because he's a nice man, he used the lover boy method. Think about how crazy that is. They're not saying I was evil and mean and forced them with force. They're saying I used the lover boy method because I was a nice man. So now if you're a polite man who helps somebody with something, it's the lover boy method. But and if the person themselves says, I asked for his help, and he hasn't hurt me, she's still a victim, and I'm still guilty, and nobody's made any money, and I have to go to jail. But did, like, you, oh, use, it, it, did you use the lover boy method? What is the lover boy method? We just described how asinine that is. And if they're gonna put me in jail based on what I just described, if they're gonna find me guilty based on what I just described, that has far-reaching ramifications for the reputation of Romania and the justice system of Romania, for people's understanding of how dangerous the law can be used when it's weaponized, for people to have faith in the European Court of Justice, because I'm sure it will go all the way to the top, I don't see how they can put completely innocent men in jail. And that's the reason I'm saying I have faith in the Romanian judicial system, because I believe they'll do the right thing. I, I believe. People in other countries are saying, do you trust the judges? I'm saying, yes. I trust the Romanian judges do the right thing. And I, know I'm, and I know I've done nothing wrong, and I trust them. And I trust that over time, as we explain this case, we're gonna be free to go. So you're asking me, how can we be found guilty? I can't imagine a scenario where that happens. It would be crazy, and it'd be very scary. If you're a man at home today, and you've, said, you've given someone some advice how to fix the tap, how to fix the light bulb, and you were nice and polite about it, you're the lover boy. Lover boy method. Somebody at home texts you, you're a man, you get a message. Hi, the light is broken. You say, hey, hope you're good. This is how you fix the light. Be careful. Look after yourself. Now, Decock come along and say, ah, you have forced labor from this person by telling her she has to fix the light, but you did it in a nice way. So you did it with the lover boy method because you didn't yell at her. You were very kind. So you used the lover boy method to charm her into fixing the light. Jail for you. And then when the person says, no, he just, I just asked him how to fix the light. I asked for his help. Quiet. You're a victim. Quiet. Here's a statement saying I'm not a victim. Ignore that. No, here's 10, they, 10 statements they made saying they're not victims. They threw that out. No, you are a victim and he is bad and he used the lover boy method because the light is repaired. It's crazy and it's scary because they can do this to anybody. They've done it to me now, but they can do it to any man they don't like. They can come along with this framework, these parameters of garbage and wreck anybody. And not just Romania, any country can. What and that's what's scary. What about the accusations in UK on your name? There are no accusations in UK. I have a civil case in UK. So in 2014, a girl I know told the police I hit her. Did you? No. She went to the police. The police 
threw the case away because they found text messages in her phone of her talking to her friend saying, I will lie about this. I'm going to tell them this. If they call you, you say this. Planning it all. They took her phone off her and saw her planning it all in 2014. So they threw it all away. Garbage. When I was arrested here in Romania, that same girl decided to launch a civil case against me. Not a criminal case, a civil case. They sent us a letter saying, I want a million dollars. It's funny when you get rich, everyone wants money. It's interesting. For what? Because in 2014 you hit me. The police have already said I haven't hit you. But she said, she sent me a letter saying that she will one day maybe sue me. Correct, she hasn't even sued me. I might sue you for a million dollars in future. When you're rich, everyone's coming out the woodwork who wants money. Everybody, what every person I've ever known, people I went to school with, old friends, my cousin's cousin, every five minutes. So money is all. Well, it's, well, people want money. It's hard out here. And now we have somebody else who saw me go to jail and thought this is a perfect time for me to try and get some money. It's stupid. And it's crazy and there's no accusations against me. Again, I, I have to look into your eyes and ask you, have sure. you ever hit a woman? That's a good question. I have, because I'm going to tell you the truth, because I'm a professional kickboxer and I've trained women. So, yes, I have hit a woman in sparring. But in anger... Beside that. In anger, no. I don't need to, and I don't think that that's a constructive way to operate a relationship. And if I hit a woman, there would be serious physical evidence. I'm a big man, and I know how to hit. And the fact that these people... Have you put anyone to hit a woman for you? No. I, I, I don't need to operate in that frame, and my life is really not that way. I create my reality very heavily. All of the women I know and interact with are extremely smart, extremely respectful, extremely polite women. I'm not an idiot. I don't have scenarios where everyone's doing drugs and people are drunk and people are screaming. Not at all. My life is very calm. It's very normal. And there's no need for any kind of violence against anybody. I don't hit men at random either. I, I haven't hit any of my guys in my house or my friends or... Why? We're, we're not children. Why have you chosen a former policewoman to protect you? Well, that's another really interesting thing about this whole case. I guess you're talking about Luana, right? I thought her name was Ellie. So it's interesting. I'm glad you mentioned this. We're a criminal gang, supposedly. I only saw her twice in my life before this. I didn't know her. She came to some parties, and I thought her name was Ellie. I didn't even know her name. Now they're saying she's a former policewoman. Da, da, da. Well, she's part of the case. Well, exactly. So when they put this gang together, they took me, my brother, obvious, our personal assistant, Georgiana, who I know very well, of course, and Ellie. I was like, what are you doing here? I, I met Ellie twice in my life before this entire experience. I don't even know this woman. I literally barely know her. My brother knew her. I think it's one of my brother's ex-girlfriends. She used to come to parties. But I was just like, hi, hi. I think before this experience, I must have said literally three words to her in my life. I don't know this person. You didn't ask Tristan about her? No, nothing. I don't know her. Tristan knows a lot of girls and a lot of men. He knows a lot of people. I don't know her. I had no idea that she used to be a policewoman. I don't think being a low-level policewoman ten, five years ago can protect you from DCAW, the, the, the number one federal agency in the country. So it doesn't even make sense. And I didn't even know that was her past. I didn't know her past at all. I didn't know the person. So it's another, I'm glad you mentioned that, which shows how crazy the whole case is. Describe Tristan in one word. It's a good question. His nickname is Talisman, and I think that that is a perfect nickname because he is an extremely lucky person. He's lucky. If you had to choose someone... Luckier than you? Yeah. If you had to choose someone to Are you roll, jealous? No, not about at all. That? Not at all, because he's on my team. <laughs> if you had to choose someone to roll the dice and get a six, you would choose Tristan. Describe you in one word. That's a good question. Perspicacious. I pay attention to things. I understand why things are happening. I think a lot of people go through life and they're semi-blind. But I like to try very hard to pay attention to everything and notice everything and put the pieces together as to why I end up in the situations I'm in. Did you understand what happened to you? I understand that... There is an ongoing judicial process. I believe that it is spawned from my monumental success. I believe that justice will be done. I believe the population understand that I am innocent of any crime. I believe that it's been a learning experience and I am here to continue my life to represent myself and represent Romania in the best possible light and to the world. And that was the proof of per being perspicacious? Absolutely, yeah, that's right.
in the end of our discussion. Do you have a message for those who are watching you? Yeah, I do have a message. And my message is the same as every other message I've ever given, which is one of positivity and one of hard work and diligence. And I would like to think that me going through this process has not only taught me things, has also taught other people things. And I hope everybody can learn a lesson from this experience of mine and to be very careful with the people you interact with and be careful you interact with quality people, men and women, uh, who are never going to make false accusations against you for money. And all in all, I believe that this will end up being a positive thing for both me and hopefully the country of Romania. I think in the end we can turn this into a positive thing and I hold no ill will in my heart against any of the people who have tried to destroy my life because God is the most powerful and they will pay the price when God decides. Karma is real and I have nothing to do now besides win the criminal case. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.